Okay, so we are going to take a look at Sync. So this is, carries on from an existing uh, video thing that I've done, um, which was an entire overview of uh, energy slash folio, uh, the code base. So that one tries to cover a lot of like specific points within the application. But this one tries to be a lot more specific. Um, the last one talks about like the most used user flow and tries to cover uh, like the parts in which that 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 happens. Um, this one is going to try and attack uh, uh, the part of the application that is dealing with sync. So sync is extremely complicated. Uh, everyone knows that and uh, done. Um, oh. The real problem here is that you want to have uh, all of your data, so in our case, all of the partner's data, so that is things like the artwork, the shows, the documents, um, the running in instance, yeah, anything. Everything you see here should be synced. It should have been pulled down at some point, like all this crazy metadata, um, like the addition information about the artworks, all this stuff, it should be available offline for whenever you want it. Um, and that's all stored in an external API. Um, and that's okay. Like, you know, there are ways of dealing with these kind of problems. Uh, Eigen, for example, uh, deals with it pretty elegantly by not storing anything. Uh, it has a very uh, regular relationship with the server. So it constantly asks, you know, uh, I would like to show a gene. Can you pass me the gene artworks? Can you pass me the gene metadata? Uh, Energy can't do that because um, I mentioned this earlier, but like Energy's main use case is at like fairs and on the road. And uh, when you're at a fair and on the road, chances are you're either not on Wi-Fi or on really bad Wi-Fi. So generally what you do is you go beforehand, press the button that downloads everything and you're ready to go. And that's the, that's the ideal. Um, however, sync is super complicated. Um, this is like, you know, during a sync, you can go online and offline. You could be trying to sync while you're on crappy Wi-Fi, And so uh, like the results that you get from the server may not actually be what you expect. Um, you probably want to be able to support showing partial data during the sync. So in our case, uh, we have partners uh, like the Gagosian that have thousands of artworks on Artsy. Um, so, and they'll be giving us some of their highest resolution images. So suddenly you've got like a few gigabytes worth of uh, image data to download onto like your little iPad. And maybe you're just doing it over uh, 3G, uh, which, we warn you about, but um, uh, there are like use cases where uh, sync is an expensive problem, literally, <laughs> and uh, like computationally. Um, you know, you the, the use case of folio is that you get this thing out, you present it to somebody, you, you as you're showcasing your works, you do not want like this big downloading process to be happening in the background, like slowly stuttering your like data, uh, your use case, like your user experience. Um, Sync generally requires a ton of moving parts. So, uh, like in our case, um, you know, we need to tell you, we need to present updates that sync is in progress. We need to be able to, oh, I could probably sync while I'm still talking. So, like, I can go to sync, I can hit, oh, look, <laughs> my Wi Fi signal is weak, which it actually is. And now it's strong again, which it also is. So, you, we want to be able to show this kind of data while it's going on. We want to tell you, like, we want to be able to provide an estimate. We want to be able to provide how long it will take. Um, and we want to be able to, you know, uh, give a good experience. And there we go, hey, completed. And it went from like nine to less than a minute overall. Um, and we want to be able to tell you when you do previous things and all these things. And they're like, they're all effectively side effects of the sync, right? Sync's real job is to pull a bunch of data down to, uh, onto your computer. Um, so I guess uh, I should probably talk a little bit about this. So Sync in Folio has existed from more or less day one. Um, Folio is 
roughly four and a half years old. Um, and so Sync has evolved with the Artsy API. Um, the Artsy API was initially pretty simple and now is a behemoth because, you know, Artsy itself is a complicated company. <laughs> um, and so, you know, we've had to, we've had to make changes over the, over the years. But I can talk about the simplest implementation. Um, the simplest implementation that we made of Sync, like the first version, was ask a, it would make an API call for like a partner's artworks. So it would use a paginated uh, collection of artworks. So the first thing it would do, it would paginate through those artworks, uh, JSON transform those into core data model objects. Um, and then uh, once it's got all these artworks, then it would say like, okay, so what artists have we seen in here? So it will pull out all these artists which are available as like uh, embedded objects inside the, the paginated artwork data. Um, and they would get turned into their own objects. Um, and then we would start saying, okay, so we've got all our artists. Uh, we've got, we now need to get shows. So it would go through shows. Uh, after asking that, it would ask for a paginated list of shows. Uh, it would paginate through those. Um, it would generate locations as a side object, like every show has a location, uh, so an, an artwork can be at a location, so you can say like, this artwork is situated at this place, so you know as a partner that, you know, if we're going to sell artwork X, it's at building Y. Um, and then we then paginate through a bunch of more stuff. Um, and we uh, struggled initially to try and find ways to uh, reduce uh, the amount of downloading we would have to do. Um, one of the problems there with all the pagination was that if a single uh, item within the paginated set changed, or even a nested model within a set of paginated mo <laughs> model objects changed, then uh, there was uh, no uh, no caching, like the cache would be invalidated because it was completely wrong. So effectively, you would have to download the entire set of the entire data every single time. Um, then uh, we struggled with ways of like trying to keep like a local cache that we could compare against to see whether uh, these two things were kept in sync. And that also kind of became a lot of code that wasn't very uh, useful in the end. So, um, yeah, we had we had a few problems, uh, but we but it worked right, and that is part of the thing. Uh, it was shippable, the, the code was uh, pretty solid, and we we shipped a bunch of versions of it for a few years. And so um, at the end of 2014, we uh, had a a guy working with us called Dustin Barker, who went on to be uh, head of Facebook's newsfeed after Artsy. Um, and he came in uh, was like, this stuff is janky. We need to we need to think think again. And um, super glad he did that. So one of the things that he eventually built uh, was like the core abstraction that we went we then rebuilt sync entirely off. And um, I will load up the pod page for it. So it is a thing called DRB operation tree. And um, it requires a bit of a, a rethink about how you think about APIs in order to like actively understand how this works. So the DRB operation tree is a, basically a way of doing something similar to an operation queue, but as a tree structure. So instead of something being like synchronously one by one by one, it is um, treed up. So let's let, we'll go through his example and I'll try and provide a bit more texture. So the example in this in this pod page, uh, let's see if I can make it a bit bigger. Okay, is um, they're going to talk about a a cookbook and a recipe uh, API. So here's he provides some endpoints up front, which is like a cookbook that provides a list of all recipe IDs, and then each recipe has its own unique URL. Each ingredient has its own URL, and eventually there are images for every single ingredient, uh, and probably a recipe. So what he said here is that there is a dependency tree involved in this API, right? So in order to get a cookbook, uh, you, it, well, in order to get a single recipe, right? You have to go to a cookbook, list all recipes, pick out one of those recipes, and then get out all the dependent uh, bits of data related to that. So 
what this the way that this is structured is that it would make you would have a single uh, operation tree node that would uh, represent the cookbook. The cookbook would go back. Uh, it would make some do some operations, and it would come back with a model object that represents your cookbook. That model object is the thing that gets passed down into vegetables. You. Uh, yes. So. The way that this works in our case is like the first thing you do is you get a partner. We then pass this partner model down into the, the next set of operations. So in his case then, we next do, um, we go for the recipe. We know that we want to get the recipe of vegetable stew. There would be like tons of other recipes in that cookbook, but in this case, he's cut the tree down just so that it's like reasonable as a picture. Um, and this vegetable stew will require uh, an image for itself, uh, and then it will require a API calls for ingredients onions, ingredients garlics, ingredients carrots, and ingredients bay leaf. And then each one of those has another thing underneath it that says that once that has been done, we're gonna also then need to pull out uh, an image for this onion. So <laughs> you can see here, there's like, he shows a, an older approach, like approach that was very similar to how I described sync earlier, which is like, we get this one thing, then we loop through this thing, then we loop through this thing, then we loop through this thing, and then if this thing exists, then we go and pull this thing out, and then we wrap that and add it into this thing. And all you are really gonna end up doing, and this is like basically what original sync was, was like massive callback hell, um, which is a really tough structure to work with, especially when you have like, thousands of lines of code related to sync. Um, and so the thing that DIB operation tree lets you do is that you stop thinking in terms of like uh, paginating through your collection of something and then passing on to something. Um, you start to think about mapping data via operations. So the way that he describes it here is that you map one object to one or more child objects. So it goes from a cookbook and it gets a list of all of its recipe IDs. So that is mapped cookbook to collection of recipes. Then you, and each one of those is is effectively the tree. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my hands are like, I'm using different spaces of trees. Um, then you've got this big list of recipes and those recipes also have their own list of like ingredients. So like, this tree, which started with one cookbook to a list of recipes, now has a ton of like uh, recipe ingredients. And the thing is then that each work will need, each part of that tree will need work to move on to the next bit. And the, the work for the next bit is done using an NF operation. So that is why it is called like an operation tree because it uses uh, NS operations in a tree-like structure and provides a, uh, a way of mapping from one object to others based on NS operations. Okay, Whew. so uh, the example he gives us below creates a collection of five operation trees, one for the cookbook, recipe, recipe images, ingredients, and ingredient images. It then creates providers. Now, uh, I don't think he's talked entirely about providers yet, but I can talk about it in a second when we get to this bit below. Um, but a provider is effectively a way of like saying, it, provi it provides the mapping knowledge. It provides the knowledge to go from one object to another. Um, so you say here, you say that the recipe provider uh, and the recipe image provider and the ingredient provider and the ingredient image provider all get structured via these add child. So you can see that the cookbook adds the child of the recipe. You can see that the recipe adds the child of the recipe image and it also adds the child of the ingredient. So it's linking the recipe to like, go and do the job of grabbing uh, to the tree that says this thing is gonna go and grab an image. Uh, and it's, in this case, the recipe image is only one operation, but in the other case of like ingredient, then it's multiple operations. And then you go to the ingredient and you say the add child. You'll note that the cookbook here doesn't have a provider. Um, and that is because in this case, the cookbook just sends along its, 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 its object first. It does the first thing uh, and doesn't have to do any work in this case. So effectively what you have here is you have these operation trees and these operation trees have a provider whose job is to map from one thing to another thing. 
So the way that that works is that it has two delegate calls. Um, the first one is says like, I am passing you in a tree and an object, and I want objects back asynchronously. So in this case, uh, this is uh, this, this in this example case here, it's a synchronous method, so it just says uh, straight away you have you, well in his case it's synchronous, yeah, it's fine. Um, pass on the recipe dot ingredients ID. So in comes a recipe which uh, <laughs> I should send a pull request to fix this. This is here should say recipe and uh, that then says completion in right here with the objects for the next callback. So it's passing in the original object, so in this case the, the recipe, and it's taking out the set of, of like item uh, of the map items so it's gone from the recipes and it's mapped it to the ingredient IDs you will this uh, provider will then get a callback for every single operation with every single <laughs> every single item that was provided in this completion block so in this case every single ingredient ID will get a callback on this operation tree operation for object so in this case, what it's doing is it's saying, uh, I'm going to return an NS block operation. That operation, <laughs> that operation is going to fetch an ingredient and return a success or a failure. So, and then it's going to pop out the success and pop out the failure. This object at the end will be the thing that will get passed on to its children further down the tree. So like some of the key things that it talks about here is that it's like it solves the problem of taking like a graph and turning it uh that is previously parallel so you can see it here as like this one big structure and it sorts it out into collections of smaller objects that are both like the tree and the data provider or the data mapper whatever you like we call it providers um this makes it really easy to deal with uh detecting when all the data has been finished because each tree uh, only says it's completed when all of the nodes underneath it have been done. Um, and uh, it, makes it, <laughs> it makes it really easy to say what is part of the, uh, the abstraction for like doing the work and what is the abstraction of pulling out uh, the, the, the bits of metadata that you think are relevant to the work you're doing. Whew, great, okay. So that is roughly DRB operation tree. Now, I totally respect if you're confused right now. I was confused for a while when this came into my code base, but uh, it's a great, <laughs> it's a really great abstraction and it's the entire base of all the stuff that we're gonna talk about from now on in. Whew. Okay, so how do you represent a sync within our application? Well, we represent it with an AR sync. Um, and I think is an object that gets passed around uh, a lot. It's not, there's no like singleton per se, um, but there generally is only run one sync object existing at once. Um, I'm pretty sure the app delegate creates it in this case. Uh, yep, part, uh, there's a partner sync and there's a sync. Um, and in this case, uh, what it represents is uh, something that can start a sync. You can cancel all of it. Uh, so say like you've gone offline, not gone offline, say that you've uh, logged out. Um, you can pause. So in this case, we pause when we're offline and online and some other job, it's someone else's job in the sync to deal with that. Um, it can provide a rough estimate based on the knowledge that it currently has uh, for um, updates and you can save. Uh, the way in which it handles uh, it's per giving data out is via a delegate. Um, in order to keep the sync uh, pretty clean, we have a sync progress object whose entire thing is to deal with showing the progress of the sync currently. Um, and then we have a sync config object, which is a, I think, a, a config object. It's just like, a, it's a bit like that AR mail settings thing. Um, it exists to wrap the managed object contents, the defaults, and the deleter because deletion is even harder, and that's a really hard problem that I did not list earlier. 
So like, how do you know if an object doesn't exist anymore that used to exist uh, in, in your current database? Like keeping those in sync is also a problem. So let's look at what we got in the code because I'm pretty sure it's like not that big. 300 lines of code. We could probably go through the entire thing. Um, so sync itself is pretty simple. The sync method just says perform sync and when sync is finished, it sends self. So let's uh, let's let's dig into that one, eh? Um, every operation tree can take a operation queue. So we have operation queues that say uh, we create multiple. We provide one for artworks. We provide one for networking requests, and we provide one for image operations. So this means that we can limit the amount of concurrent operations happening on the sync. So in this case, um, the artworks. Artwork networking can have five simultaneous downloads. Everything else can have five simultaneous downloads. And image operations, so think image resizing or uh, stitching, uh, can have up to 10 concurrent operations in the background. And that's all at the same time. Um, and obviously, because uh, they're in a sort of operation queues, they're off the main. Is it obvious? Maybe they don't have to be off the main. Off in the background, but whatever. So in the background. Um, so we generate some operation queues that allow us to control the amount of like backgrounding work that is being done. Um, we then create a root operation. Uh, we we use this so that we can dependency inject in a root operation for doing testing. Um, so if it doesn't exist, then we should create a sync one. Uh, I should talk about this, but I'll just roughly show you the overview. You can see here we have a ton of nodes. Each part of that is a separate step within the uh, the syncing process for, for energy. Um, and I can talk about those in depth a little bit further when we start to talk about like how they all connect. Um, so moving next, we then have to deal. We then create plugins. Um, plugins is a structure that I created for dealing with side effects within sync. Um, originally, this perform sync was this uh, mega function that would do a lot of work. Um, side effects, uh, for example, uh, let me bring up a list, sync plugins. Okay, so here's some of the things that people care about with sync. Uh, we have a sync insomniac option uh, object. Its entire job is to set the idle timer on the uh, on the operating system. So while sync is running, you can leave your iPad uh, on your desk and it will sync and it won't turn itself off. Like, is that the job of the sync? Not really. Um, is it the? I mean, it is the job of the sync to do that. But is it the job of the sync object whose object is whose role is to be like downloading and stuff like that? Not really. Um, so we created a, a sync plugin system, uh, which is super simple. It has a sync to start and a sync to finish method. Um, and in this case, we dependency inject the shared application so we can test it. Um, and oh, it used to be really hard to test that we were like sending an idle timer. Um, and once we had sync plugin tests, it was so simple. So in some spec, uh, you can see here that it's just like we just have a before each that creates an insomniac, creates a fake UI application, um, and then just runs uh, runs sync for testing. Which I'm interested in. What is that? Okay, yeah, this is a, a, a an extension on sync that creates a version of sync that has a different type of uh, operation tree. Um, this is really easy to introspect. So you can see here that we say, uh, we tell the, the application to not sleep when it starts. So we check, is the idle tide disabled? We check it's false. We tell it the sync has started because it's a plugin. Um, and then we say, okay, great. So sync has started. So we can now verify that uh, is idle time is idle timer disabled has changed since we started the sync. And then when we do the same, we can set it backwards. And then we have a, uh, a another, like part of the thing that we were looking at here for AR sync for testing is a function that will look inside the sync's uh, default plugins 
and see if it has a specific class. So in this case, writing a test to verify that a default version of the sync includes the sync insomniac is a one-liner. And that sort of stuff makes it really easy to make sure that people don't make mistakes. Um, and so we have this plugin system that allows us to do logging. So we can say like how many artworks are downloaded, how many artworks have changed. Um, we can do things like telling uh, the rest of the application that uh, sync has started or finished via, an insult, uh, via a notification. Um, and we can provide analytics data. Uh, so we can say like here's the sync before and here's the sync after. It was originally all this stuff was kind of jammed inside the sync object. Uh, and once we started separating all out into separate smaller components, um, then suddenly we started to find that like we could actually write tests for this stuff and we didn't have to like resort to using OC mock, uh, which is like effectively for me is when we are like that's when with it's a code smell effectively for these code bases. Um, like if, if you have to mock something to test something, hmm, a bit worrying. Um, so that's good. Uh, one of the worst ones is this though. Like uh, we have to, uh, for iCloud, we have to disable downloading, uh, at, uh, uploading your entire database up to iCloud, but we can't easily do it during the process because files get overwrote. Uh, so we have to do it when it's finished. There's like this time period, I bet, where it's trying to upload one or two, um, but then we go through and we like wipe them all to be uh, not backing up. So that's sync plugins. Um, they're they're pretty solid. Um, we also have a sync progress. Uh, the sync progress is a separate object. So a sync progress, um, and this is. The sync progress has a separate delegate to the sync. So the sync delegate is not the same thing as a sync progress delegate. So one uh, consumer of the sync, you know, could be the view controller, but maybe a view inside the view controller could be the progress delegate. And so it could just deal with setting a progress. Um, progress is interesting because uh, initially it's really hard to do a progress uh, thing. And this is a really simple way of doing it. Um, we have a, an estimate of how long it uh, how long it will take to make uh, the progress. We every time we download something that's like a JSON or an image data, we send the progress. Uh, uh, we tell it that we have updated, we have downloaded X amount, and it keeps a running sample of how much download data has been downloaded over time, and then uses like the last, uh, does it say? Moving average x n plus one samples that count. I don't know. There's like x amount somewhere in there. There's we oh five. So it keeps track of the last five samples of saying like how much data has been downloaded over time, and then uses those to provide an estimate. So like initially all this stuff tends to be slower, and then like halfway through when you're just like churning JSON data and image data, then um, it starts to get faster, which is why we saw this kind of like, uh, in my head, it's like a curve, but uh, we saw a process where it, it started out with like 10 minutes, and then it went to seven minutes, and then it went to five, and then it just did it in under a minute. So the entire thing is still like off, but it's not, it gets better over time. And for a very large sinks, uh, it gets pretty accurate. And so that's how we deal with like the progressing. Each, uh, because we send to most of our providers, uh, a sync config object that we looked at earlier, then it has access to the progress uh, for the sync. So it can send it like a little hint of information. Um, we, that's the progress, great. Uh, and then we start it actually. So this is the start. This is very similar to what we saw in the bit before in the demo readme. Um, we get the current partner ID, so that is just a string. So in my case, I think, uh, I think it's like folio, I think, uh, I think I call this one folio test partner. So that would be like the, the, the current ID. And we just send in this one string to that, uh, to the root tree object. Okay. Um, and that's mainly, that's mainly all that happens. There's some like run the before and run afters, which are just simple eaches that check to see if it responds, if it does send it. Um, and saving uh, just as some logic around letting people know if 
let's put sync errors, uh, well not sync errors, merge errors on managed object context. Um, and this is where the work gets done. So it's called, and like create sync operation tree does a lot of work. Um, uh, let's just kill that. So we create these nodes and uh, I kind of structure them with spacing here to try and make it obvious like uh, where the collections are. Um, these are all kind of root root-ish and connected-ish nodes. Um, you could effectively say those. So like, we have to get a partner, but we also have to get a, a user node at the same time, and we also have to get an estimate. Um, then we also have, like, we have to get all artworks, we have to get all, we have to receive, we have to get all images, uh, we also have to get all image, we have to generate image thumbnails, we'll also have to download separately tiles and we also have to unzip tiles because zip tiles are presented to us in zip files. Um, we want to grab all shows, you want to grab all documents and all artworks and all installation shots and all the shows covers. So like in this case, if we, let's, let's do show because that's pretty like logical. So the shows node is something, uh, is a, a tree that represents show, downloading shows. Um, so I'm going to open up the shows node provider. Uh, I'll kill this and I'll separate these a bit and show you what's going on. So the show downloader uh, is a provider. Uh, so it is a DRB operation provider. There's no subclassing or anything else like that. It just says that it's going to correspond to two methods. Um, it's going to correspond to this object for object and it's going to do operations for trees. Nice, simple. So this objects for objects is the well, the first thing obviously is the init, and the init like provides the context, provides the deleter, great. Um, really, at some point that should be changed to init with config, but for now, like you know, we're shipping code, we're shipping apps, not code bases. Um, so we uh, we keep track of the partner slug so that we can use it later. Um, this has been provided to us. Magically, where is this provided? I'm not sure where that comes in. Oh, wait, uh, sorry. <laughs> we get the object. So the first thing that comes in to us is the partner slug because that's the first thing that gets sent down. Uh, and then we say we want to get a list of all the partner shows IDs. Um, so we then generate a AF HTTP request operation, which is just going to pull some JSON in. Um, and it's going to have a completion block with success where we then pass along the response object back to this completion back here. Um, that's going to be basically a, a, a list of uh, a, a list of strings that represent IDs for shows. So then in this operation tree, uh, it will get called for every single show ID. Um, and then for each one of those, we create an operation, but we don't start it. So we say we're going to create a we're going to get a request. We're going to say, here's the partner slug, here's the show ID. Please give me back in this URL request. We're going to create an AFJ sum request that say in it with the request we just asked for. Um, we're going to deal with the operations completion block where in the background we're going to add or update objects. So we're going to get these response objects. We're going to we tell it that it's going to be a show. We provide the context via dependency injection. We say it's not going to save because like saving is expensive, so we only do it occasionally. Uh, expensive from a user interface perspective. If you're scrolling up and down and the like background and the syncs keep updating themselves, then it's going to uh, going to slow it down. Um, so, and then we grab those. Once they're all done, then we say we're, we're given back all the objects. So we're given a completion block with all the objects that have come from that like background feed translation. So it's like, it's just our OIN basically. Um, and we're given a bunch of shows. And then we say, don't delete this show. So, I'll go to that in a second, but at the end, basically, we don't start this operation, which is important. We just took it into the tree, and the tree will put it inside its own uh, operation queue, which we created back here. As this is a show, it will be in the request operation queue, so it will get 
done when it's it's time. Okay, so let's talk about the deletion because it's come up now. So AR deleter is uh, also I think pretty simple. Uh, AR sync deleter. It has a sync. It, it's a plugin. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Um, so sync and start. So on its plugin, when this when the start of the uh, sync happens, it says, "Okay, look through my local database." Give me a list of all artworks, all artists, all images, all documents, all shows, and all locations. It will then loop through every single one of those and say, you, buddy, are marked for deletion. We then get a list of all downloaded albums, because currently you can create read-only albums locally that won't be downloaded. And then we say to all of you guys, we're going to delete you, unless, if, unless you, know, you happen to have been changed. Uh, then <laughs> this one's a really useful bit of code actually. Sync did finish. We actually look to see if the application has gone into the background during the sync. And if it does, we're not going to do any deletion. Um, it is much better to have someone say, oh, this thing hasn't deleted than to say everything has been deleted because sync got started and then sync got stopped and then every single networking request didn't come back and say, hey, this artist was, was like 404. It's like, how do you tell the difference between crappy networking and uh, like an hour because uh, an artist has been deleted? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not sure. Um, so we try and be as uh, safe as possible with respect to uh, deleting these things. Um, and then we delete it. So uh, we just have uh, some some pretty some like ways of trying to be safe around like saying that this thing is object this thing is deleted and this thing is not um, because it's like multi-threaded and boy is this thing multi-threaded. Uh, then there we have to make sure that we're using uh, at synchronize to make sure that we're not like adding or removing things at the same time. Um, and then at the end, it's really simple. Like we we do a delete objects. We we tell it that we're synchronizing again on on itself, and then we delete all the objects from the manage object context. Hey. But we also say how many has been deleted uh, because like as a developer, you kind of want to see those things because uh, chances are if you delete something, it's because you wanted it to and you want to test something. Um, so that is a rough gist of how like for example the show downloader uh, works or the the show provider. And if you if we go back to this node here, so we can see show node that provider, so this pink one, um, with we create we create all the providers next to each other, and then at the bottom we connect them all. So the partner node, this is where this uh, plugin that colors everything according to the like the name of it, uh, is really useful because you're like, okay, partner node is this yellow thing. So the partner node is is like used in a bunch of things. Um, you can see it has a few child children. One of those child children is the show node. So the partner node does its upload, uh, does its does its work, its work goes and pulls the partner in, then it passes along the partner ID. The partner ID then will go into anything that is the child of the partner node. So if I do a quick look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight different uh, trees waiting to receive the partner node. And then they once they get it, they will go and do their work. They'll, they'll ask their uh, providers for like operations based on the partner ID string we've had in. So the show uh, show one, so there's a partner node that adds the show, so show will receive a string of the partner ID. Then every, on every single show we will add, we will pass in the full show object. So, uh, and I know that because that's what I chose to do. Uh, uh, what did I do it? There. So here we go. Continuation show. So it takes the object. Uh, in this case, it's only updating one at a time, so we're safe to pull it out at once. Uh, and uh, and if it if it gets nil, then it won't do anything because like it will pass a nil down the rest of the tree, and the tree will just be like, oh, I got one nil, because um, it represents no data. Um, so I've got my show node. And the show node is now going to pass a full show object to show artworks node, show documents node, show installation shots node, show covers node. So let's go to the show covers node because that then has some more children. Um, so show, uh, what is the show covers node? So let's grab this one, let's check it back up. And it is a show cover shot downloader. Pretty simple. 
So again, <laughs> so this is really nice, right? So the show cover shot downloader is something that it will receive a show and it only has to create, there's only going to be one cover for every show. So we just straight away, straight pass through the show and say like, yeah, we, 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 we just need to show. We just need to pass the show through. Um, and then the next string says, okay, so we need a cover image for the show. So we pass in the show, it pulls out the slug and it says, and some reason it says page. Um, and uh, we then, pull, right, this doesn't even like try and turn it. So we, we pull out the dictionary for the first object. This should have some comments. Uh, response object, first object. So we should be getting uh, an array, and we're pulling out a dictionary that represents the image. If this has if this has nothing, then we pass nothing down. Um, so uh, like this data could just return an empty array, basically. Um, it then says, okay, do take take this image, convert it into an image class in the context that we have been provided for the show cover that was DI'd back here. And when that's done, do some like real work. So this is like, uh, this is a managed object context before block. So it's saying like, we're gonna actually do work. Uh, and like during that work, please, uh, please don't allow anything else to happen on the managed object context. Um, because we're, we are writing to the managed object context inside this block. Because we're saying, the show that we've already been passed in at the beginning is going to set the cover to this object that we've just been passed through. And then we say uh, the show.cover don't mark for deletion. Uh, yeah, remove from the deletion list. Oof. And then we don't start the operation because it's someone else's job to start the operation, like the tree. Uh, and, and then we move on. And it continues with the show.cover. So it continues with an image but it's not a UI image, it's an artsy image with a capital I. So we have an image, but we don't have image data. So then we also need to take our show cover node and we need to pass it into an image node. An image node happens to be a receiver of quite a lot of things. Uh, you can see it's like show installation shots, show covers, uh, artwork node, uh, that's about it. It's not trivial. Um, and so just to give you a rough overview, but we're done showing how these things work, is that um, it will deal with different types of objects coming in and it will convert them into URLs to download for the thumbs, the thumbnails, which, and then its job will be to download those and to pass them through to the progress that we talked about earlier. Whew. And it also, uh, Ooh. It also sends a push, no push, no sends a push notification. It sends a notification that a large image has been downloaded. Um, I haven't shown it to you, but like part of the application uh, uh, sync process on the first time has like a, a slideshow of all of the images going by, and so things listen out for whether these large images have been downloaded. And if they've been downloaded, they get put in a queue, and then they get presented in a beautiful slideshow map, uh, which is just nice. Okay, so that is how the nodes work associated with the tree. So that is like how our tree trees up. Um, and that is the rough structure of the entire sync for Folio. So some of the other things that are related to this then. Um, we have a small sync. <laughs> we call it the partner metadata sync, I think. I think there was an entirely different object that I saw in the AI app delegate for it. Uh, which was AR partner metadata sync, uh, which I think will be more or less the same thing as an AR sync, but it will be uh, significantly smaller. It will just be a tree that basically represents just pulling down the full metadata. The reason we did it this way is so that they share code, because like it's only doing one networking request, but it's also happening to do it in the same structure. Um, we use that then to know like, should we be showing, should we be logging you in? Should we be telling you that you need to subscribe or locking you out or uh, other things that we do with the partner metadata? Uh, you know, it's an app, we've got lots to do. Um, so generally that's all pretty nice, simple stuff. Um, one of the great things about like having so many classes and we have so many classes and like, let me, uh, let me, let me show this off. 
small, yep, yep. It's a ton of like small classes that work well together. Um, and part of the process of that is that because of this, we can like individually test all of these individual components really easily. So if I go into a uh, sync deleter tests, um, we can just do something as simple as creating a core data manager, adding an object to the core data, uh, like the current core data context. We can just create an instance of our sync deleter because it just all it cares about is a core data uh, managed object context. And we can say, okay, so if I've passed you this context and this context has this much stuff, are you going to return the exact results like I expect? So in this case, uh, if I pass in an artwork that's already in a managed object context and you, we tell you to mark uh, a single object for deletion, are you going to be marked for deletion? Um, and then we do the same thing for like mark all objects in class for deletion, wherein we say, here are two artworks inside a context. Uh, you can look inside this uh, context to find all the artworks, and you should then say that all of the mark, all of the objects inside this uh, context should be marked. Uh, easy to write test for because it's like very step by uh, input output. Um, I already talked a little bit about how sync plugins were really easy to test. Um, so yes, uh, but one of the interesting aspects uh, I've only really started to get wrapping my head around was trying to figure out how we deal with uh, sync step tests. So uh, the thing that we ended up looking for was that um, I would make like set up context for like sub object manage context, usual stuff, usual stuff, uh, create a partner <laughs> called, called Mate, and um, we would start to look to see what happens when we provide uh, different input from a fake tree. Um, and then we could say like, okay, so if we give it a tree where we've given it an admin, then it will create uh, an NS block operation, not an, a networking operation. Um, we want to detect here that we check to see the, the networking, if we check, we pull out the query uh, of the uh, request operation, right? So. Yeah, it's a bit weird. Uh, we pull out, we get the, the, the request operation. So we say, like, I'm going to pass you this object in because that's what the, uh, let's see, I'll, I'll open this up because then I can point to code rather than talking abstract. Um, so this, the code here, like, all this, all this stuff's super simple. Um, but this is where it gets, like, slightly complicated. So if you're an admin, it will do a no operation for uploading metadata to the partner. So what this is doing is we're trying to tell uh, the CMS when was the last time someone logged in a folio. Uh, and so if you're an admin, we don't want to send that because uh, it really confuses uh, the analytics data. Um, and so we want to we want to first detect that if an if an admin is is doing it, then do, then it's doing nothing, uh, which is great because we actually have a we have a, we have a test for this now. Um, and then the next one is like okay, so we want if we provide a a real partner. And uh, what operation are you going to give me back? So we know that if it's a real partner, then it should return an AF JSON request operation. That AF JSON request operation will have a HTTP request uh, body. So we can go and like pull out the post and start looking inside to see, okay, does it have last value access, access and does it have value equals something? Like I can't put the full date in there because the um, date changes. Um, and then we can also verify that it's going to the right URL. Uh, and then finally, we also do the same thing as we did with the plugins, which is saying like, okay, so with a default sync, can you validate that this partner is included within the sync tree? So it looks inside, like all, it starts at the root object and then looks inside all its children, then looks inside all their children, looks inside all their children. And if the partner AR, if the AR partner metadata uploader is included, then it's in there. So this this like provider is like fully tested um, and is like entirely encapsulated in these uh, four tests of like all of its custom logic. Um, and so again, by separating out all of these smaller sync steps and by having a consistent protocol that they worked with, then we can provide uh, easy input output tests. Uh, 
so that generally some of the stuff that we have, um, some of the stuff gets quite complicated around like thumbnailing and like you can see all these mock objects there, which is generally a sign that something is hard to test in here. Um, but a lot of uh, a lot of the stuff that we were struggling with originally was to try and figure out like how can we how can we test like the inputs and the outputs for each individual step within the sync and now we can and like a lot of sync is currently well tested and when you have a project that is as old and like it doesn't feel crusty because like I, we've spent a bunch of time bringing it back up to speed like having these tests makes people feel significantly more comfortable making changes on something that is an extreme it's not extremely complex but it is a lot to grok like I have talked for uh, I don't know. I've, I've talked for an hour. I've talked for an hour about this, and I've only just started to really come to the conclusion. Um, I'm like, there's a lot going on in sync, and um, having all these tests means that each any person can go in there and not screw things up, and not feel like they're going to screw things up, and that is because we have like completely separated so many of these individual responsibilities into lots of small objects that all like wrap together with uh, kind of cohesive uh, ideas like the DRB operations, like the uh, sync plugins, like AR sync progress, AR sync deleter. Each responsibility is encapsulated beautifully within a small component. And uh, like this makes it really easy to test, making it really easy to test makes people feel comfortable and like that is super important because I know this code base because I've been in this code base for four and a half years, but there's a ton of people out there, notably the vast majority of the world, that hasn't been in there for four and a half years. And like making them feel comfortable making sync changes involves having these kind of tests. Um, and so I'm pretty happy with where it's got to. Uh, it's uh, it was definitely janky before the, Dustin and Barker came in and saved the day, um, and Sync is now like a pretty reasonable chunk of code that like is very understandable and people can feel pretty comfortable to, uh, editing. Um, and that that is that is a long talk on Sync. Um, as ever, feedback is totally welcome in GitHub issues or like on Twitter. Um, I'll also be uploading this as a video on YouTube, which is obviously where you're seeing it right now. Um, the only other thing that's interesting that I haven't shown you is like a sync admin UI, uh, and that is just like uh, a view controller that shows you the entire sync process uh, at once. So uh, I don't know if it's going to show you much now. Mm, beautiful. Um, it's actually worth it's actually worth me showing you. Uh, oh, I can't sh I can't remember how to do it. I don't think you can do it from here. I think you can only do it during the initial sync. But one of the great things about this was that it really provided an insight in a way that I didn't really understand at first. Um, on the amount of operations that gets created, so generally a sync of like a hundred artworks will probably generate somewhere in the range of like 5,000 to 10,000 operations. And that's but like, that's because, you know, every single tile has its own represented op uh, operation. That's because like uh, there's a ton of bits of metadata to generate and, and, and not all of those operations are HTTP requests, by the way. Um, but one of the, great things about that is that each one that each one of those HTTP requests though is a direct representation of the model that is trying to model <laughs> that it's trying to be um, and so this gets around uh, one of the problems that we had earlier which was uh, if you are paginating for a list and if a single item uh, or even an embedded item within an item uh, within that list is changed, then the entire pagination list is basically uncacheable. Because we have exact representations for every single thing, we don't have any caching in here because we just use NSURL cache and it works great. It is fab. Um, it just makes sure that uh, you know, it does real HTTP caching, it does the e-tag checking that we used to do manually. Um, 
and it, 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 it's just a really solid, solid way of dealing with the problem of like, how do we like do a sync that's kind of incremental? Um, well, if you just make the exact requests for the exact bits of data, uh, then uh, then one of the ways that you can get the right answer is by having a uh, uh, um, <laughs> a direct answer. Oh, sorry, I'm losing it. Um, so yeah, the rough gist is that like of every single uh, like model object has a singular HTTP re request to make, it can be cached perfectly because if that model has changed, that's then that's fine. It, it will tell it. But if that model hasn't changed, then the caching will just provide the old data and like the operating system provides the cache and that works really well. Um, so oof, that is roughly an entire summary of uh, how syncing works in Folio. Um, it's, uh, it's a big chunk of code and it's like taking a bit of time to write. But it's a really, it's built on some really great abstractions, and uh, it, that makes it really easy to test. And that makes me really comfortable as a developer. Okay. Ciao, everyone.